Hey guys, welcome to Undulations. You can cut up an apple with a Swiss Army knife, but you can also open a bottle of wine, maybe uh, loosen a step and bolt, or uh, start a fire on a sunny day. So, a lot of the utility of this gadget comes from the different things that you can do with it. I feel much the same way about the organelle from Critter and Guitari. You can make sweet sounds with it. But I feel like there's so much more to it because of the open framework. It's basically a Linux machine down in there. You can code up patches in the language pure data, and then you can use your own patches or maybe patches from the online community in this great form factor, these nice tactile knobs, these beautiful wooden keys. And so what I'm going to go for in this video is how you can tune this up to be a highly customizable MIDI controller. I'll be using it with the Volca keys today, do some later videos on other Volcas. And I think you'll see that the organelle has a lot to offer as a controller and it's just one of the many things that this device is good for. So let's dive in. Okay, I feel like the best way to go about this is to evolve the setup. So if you wanted to just play the organelle, all you need is power, a speaker or headphones so then the next thing I'm going to have is I'm going to add in a foot pedal just plug right into the back then you can add in say a MIDI controller like this one but remember that MIDI is a two-way street so I'm going to take MIDI from the organelle out a USB cable instead of sending it in. And then I'm not going to use the organelle for audio anymore, uh, just for MIDI coming out. And that's going to go into this, which is a uh, MIDI 2x2 box. And then I've got a 5-pin MIDI cable coming out of that. Okay, so now it's time to introduce the co-star of this show. We take MIDI out of the 2x2 box and then send that into the Volca keys. And I'm gonna take sound directly out of the Volca keys. And so I'm able to play notes. What happened? This is very different. Well, remember we're talking about coding and to do that, we need a computer. And Organelle's the computer. We've got HDMI out of the Organelle to the monitor so we can see what's going on. Gotta have a keyboard gotta have a mouse. To do that, you need to have a USB hub. So this is what we need to do the coding. Yeah, okay, so this is where this layout has evolved to, where I'm catching audio from the Volca on a field recorder and catching video from the organelle on my laptop. And we're gonna dig deeper into these pure data patches right now. Okay, so just for the curious, I think what I'll do is uh, I'm going to show the boot up for the organelle. Uh, one caveat up front, dealing with one computer within another computer, it can get confusing even if you do it, so forgive me. Uh, I'm going to type now uh, start x and that is going to bring up the organelle's graphic interface and just as something that's of interest uh, the patches are kept in a folder labeled patches and so what you should do rather than accessing them through the directory you should use the encoder i'm going to select a patch called Volcanel keys that I made quite a while ago, but it's still relevant. And first thing to show 
is that Pure Data has a sort of a paradigm, a graphical programming paradigm, where the, the, each window has got a patch, and different patches can communicate, or different uh, windows like that can communicate. So you have chunks of code that can pass messages back and forth, and when you fire up the organelle, it starts a thing called the mother patch, and what that does is that grabs data. I'm uh, changing the uh, foot pedal right now, so you can see this bar over here is going up and down. The slider is, and then I can control the sliders for the knobs by turning the knobs on the organelle. And uh, if I push the aux button, you can see that happen. And then when I push the uh, note keys, you can see note data happening down here. So the mother patch collects raw info from the organelle and then you have your own custom patches uh, I want to make sure that the font is something reasonable here okay um, okay so this is sort of the blessing and the curse of pure data which is that we're not gonna have to scroll through a lot of code this is all the code uh, it's Kind of tiny but hopefully we can make do uh, over here there's some things that have to do with making sure that data comes out onto the organelle screen and then down here i'm intercepting the default midi behavior because i want to do some custom midi behavior here in this zone which is that when i play a note on the volca i can do or sorry a note on the organelle i can do a chord for the correct setting on the Olka. And then I've also got it to where the uh, aux button does an octave drop, two octave drop. So that's sort of the note input part of it. Up here, the volume knob, not gonna use it. We don't use the encoder. So then it really comes down to these four knobs here. And then I should also make clear that you still got to change some things, like maybe the uh, peak on the uh, low pass filter. Um, you change that actually on the Volca. And so I'm just going to walk through these knobs one at a time. Knob number one, if you look out here on the pure data field, um, that code is put here and what I've basically got is uh, sort of a I mean it's not really an attenuverter but it's sort of inspired by it such that um, I have a envelope control set up to where the if I go in the negative direction so you can see this value go negative and you can also see over on the screen that the data is changing over there also and uh, so I can have a longer attack. I'm going to turn the delay down. We'll get to that. Okay. And then if I go past zero and head in the other direction, I have a longer decay. So this is what I'm talking about really in this video is that I've customized it to where I can have two different types of sounds and all in one knob. Okay, and that is the power of being able to code it yourself. That doesn't seem like something you'd like. Well, perfect. Make a different thing. And uh, that's the beauty of it. And so we'll move on. I'm going to leave that in a decay setting. And we're going to go to knob number two. Up here on the patch. And what I decided to do, if you think of a uh, two-parameter setup like a delay where you've got the rate and the intensity, I decided to cut a slice across that plane with this one knob. So that's why I call it a delay slice. So I'm going to hit a note. No delay. Okay, and so you can start to hear it. 
intensify it as the delay gets longer. And the reason for that is that you kind of want it to be, or at least I kind of want it to be a little bit more like a reverb at the lower settings. So then, next knob over here, this is quite basic. Uh, knob number three is uh, just changing the LFO rate. And that's maybe a good one to look at the code for over here that, um, let, me, let me give the LFO a little bit of a um, intensity. So, slow, up to fast, and if you look at this, I'm collecting the raw data, and then that's coming in and just sending a control signal to CC45, which is the uh, LFO setting, or the LFO CC value on the Volca and then it sends that also to the screen to update it. That's all there is to this sort of thing. Then, last one is, I decided to have it to where that you could use the LFO to either change the cutoff, or the pitch but that you wouldn't do both. Now, of course, you can do that on the actual Volca. You can make it however you want, but this is more of for a performance type of thing. And final thing, I've been changing the cutoff with the pedal. That's over here on the patch. These are the things. That I really liked about trying to do this sort of coding because it lets me have kind of a meta control of the Volca parameters. So, I'm really glad that I made this video because it reminds me of how much fun I've had with this setup of controlling the Volca keys with the organelle. And uh, shout out to Bo Beats for first introducing this device to me. And also another shout out to Bad Snacks, also a musician, beat maker, YouTuber, who featured this on some of her videos and uh, really made me think hard about getting it. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you like this content, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.